<laughs> this is such a long time coming, Buck Angel. We <laughs> have been in different spaces throughout the years, but now we're in a very similar space of talking about trans issues from a really similar perspective. Yeah. And it's been so nice to have someone else doing it. And um, you are legendary. You're an icon. You have paved the way for the trans community in a lot of a sense. Um, you started out in porn. Was that mm -hmm. where you started? Yeah. Yeah. I did. I started in porn. And, and now you're speaking out on a more political level, which mm -hmm. is why I relate to you so much more now. Mm -hmm. um, what is that transition, for lack of a better <laughs> word, been? And how has it been received? Well, you know, doing porn is it's never going to be received well, ever. It, but even though half the population watches porn. I think over half. <laughs> it's the dirty little secret mm -hmm. that no one wants to talk about. Very that. That being said, I don't have any issues with my pornography. I don't do pornography anymore. I create sex toys now. But that being said, it was difficult, actually, to sort of move into a space I'm in now from porn. And most, if you notice, there's not a lot of people who kind of move out of pornography into, yeah. for lack of a better word, mainstream. It's a very difficult space. But I think because I, I've always had, my message has never changed. You know, I've always really kept focused on what I want the world to see, which is a person like me being just a person and not necessarily an oddball or a weirdo or a freak, but just, you know, and, and sexual. I want people to see me as a sexual type person. And I think that's also important for our community, because I, I think a lot of times our community gets mm, desexualized on some level, like. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Well, it's, it's interesting because the world will sexualize the hell out of us. Yes. But then we're on these medications that desexualize us. You That's know what right. I mean? You know, we are medications that really tank our sex drives. And mm -hmm. especially, you know, you talk about the trans kid thing, which we'll get into. Oh. Um, you know, they're on medications before they even develop so they never sometimes never even experience an orgasm or anything ever ever can Which you is, imagine like <clears throat> pardon no. me but it's so bizarre to me that we have this idea i think within our community there was a lot of time that people would say to me oh well, you're really fetishizing trans men and i thought to myself but hold up here wait a minute here first off there's nothing wrong for me i don't believe that fetishizing is a bad thing i think it's just a form of sexualization and i don't have a problem being sexualized at yeah. all it sort of helped me be this person and it helped me really be comfortable in my weird body, right? In my different kind of body. And so for me, the fetishization of my body was important for me to be able to walk the world naked and to be saying, look, I'm a different kind of man. I don't have what other men have. And and I don't think it's a bad thing on no. some level. It's also just up to the individual person. So some people, um, and it may be due to their own traumas throughout their lives or just because of their personality mm -hmm. or, or their own sense and, 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 and mm -hmm. view of sex, they're not comfortable being sexualized and that's valid. But then there are that's people right. that are like me I'm and that's totally valid fine with it. and there's that's a place right. for it. And what I think is so cool is that I've seen you now, you've done a bunch of um, really right wing shows mm -hmm. recently yep. that, you know, a lot of them that I've done, mm -hmm. but I, if you would have asked me if someone could like move from porn, especially trans porn That's into right. doing those shows, <laughs> I would have been like, no, they would never, you know, <laughs> they might tolerate Blair White, but they're not going to go for like the porn star, no. but you, you're doing it. You're I killing know. it. You're making a Thank huge you. difference. Thank you. And for all the talk about representation in the community, yo, we need representation in, in mm -hmm. books and movies and, and this and that. We also need it in the right wing space. That's right. And you're being, and you're a big that's part right. of that. And, and, you. and, you know, that's so important regardless of what people have to say about it but well you know I people have said all kinds of things about me my whole life so it's like I had grew a thick skin and I don't really care what anybody thinks about me what right. I care about is making change in the world whether or not you like me or not I'll you know I'll, I always say it it's just respect respect me and I'll respect you back those right wing people whatever you want to call them respect me my own community doesn't respect me so ask me where i'm gonna go i'm gonna go there they're the ones who give me space to have these conversations they're the ones who are willing to have the conversation i always walk away shaking hands and actually i'm friends with people so there's something something there that i want people to understand just because you are something doesn't make you part of that community and just because I'm a transsexual man doesn't mean I have to go along with everything that's being said in the trans community because I disagree with probably more than 80% of the stuff that's coming out of there. I mean, likewise. I mean, sounds a little redundant to even say, but I'm, I'm <laughs> same for me, you know? Like, it's, um, there's a list of things we have to say That's right. as trans people. There's a list of positions we must take mm -hmm. to be considered part of the community. That's right. Which I go back and forth between even considering myself part of the community. Yeah. I have trans friends. You're one of them. I, mm -hmm. I love my trans friends. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of my supporters are trans. But mm -hmm. am I really part of the trans community? I don't know. 
based on the way they treat me. That's right. Is that really a community I want to be a part no. of? And what's so crazy is you mentioned like um, that um, a lot of these like right wing shows and the people behind them have embraced you mm -hmm. and considered you a friend and work with you. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because one of the things I'm sure you get it as well is I get people saying, well, you know, Blair, they don't really respect you. Those aren't really your friends. Which, first of all, people don't know who my friends are. I have That's like five right. real friends. So you're right. Just because I was on someone's show does not mean I'm their friend. That's right. Um, but it's interesting because they never name the people that don't respect me. They'll never actually name names. They'll just say in general, you know, right wing people. And it's like, I'm under no illusion that the right wing is like the savior of trans people no. or allies of trans people. Yes. What I'm doing is purposely trying to build a bridge between the two. Because there is, and you're That's doing it as well, right. and I'm so thankful. There's no, the, the way trans politics right now is going, mm -hmm. this is the Titanic. <laughs> this is the iceberg. That's right, friend. And I feel like you and I are like desperately <laughs> trying to turn the fucking wheel. <laughs> Just me and you. Only and I know. <laughs> But I also wanted to talk to you about this. <laughs> and, and we'll get into detail of all the things that we disagree with the community on. But um, one of the things that's so frustrating about being me is knowing, well, there's a lot of things. But one of the things that comes to mind right now is how many trans people that are famous, that are in my DMs saying, I agree with you. Right. Oh my God, you're so right about trans kids. Yeah. This is ASMR right now. <laughs> um, yes, you're so right about a trans sport. You're so right about trans kids. And these are yes huge figures with audiences even bigger than mine even bigger than yours and and they're exactly. perpetuating these things but they are different behind closed doors Ugh. so i feel like often i'm in a community full of cowards hypocrites. let's be real hypocrites cowards yep. and the only reason why things that we believe are even seen as radical yep is because the sheer lack of people who will talk about that's it that's right if there was even a few more people just one. Well, Caitlin as well now. Well, and, you know, Caitlin she, has. She stepped up. Yeah, she, she has, did. She and and she's taking all the slings and arrows. Ooh, she's taking heat, but she doesn't care. That's why she's so who she is, and I support her. Look, I'm not gonna. Be, I'm not, I'm not on everything that she says politically, but Same. that's okay. It doesn't matter. That doesn't mean that what she d d isn't doing is putting herself in a space in the world to see a trans woman on Fox News. Right. Yet these people continue to say, "Well, we need representation." So the minute there's representation. It's the wrong kind of representation. This right. is how wing nutty our community has become. I don't belong to that community either, just so you know. That's not my community. My community is people who care. My community is humans. My community is gay people, straight people, whatever, black, white, You're an green. individual. That's right. I don't, there's no reason because I'm a transsexual person that I have to belong to a, a, a space that I feel has become, on some level, culty and indoctrinating. And I don't believe in any way, shape, or form that that is community. I believe it's a forceful way to get people to believe something. So because there's power in numbers. You know, the more people you get involved in a, in a, in a cause, that more, yeah. more powerful that cause becomes. And to me, I just question, like, what does me, having, what does me being trans have to do with mm -hmm. 12 year olds being trans sterilizing themselves right. being in sports in, in, in women's leagues mm -hmm. none of that like when i was sitting and i was like oh my god i think i'm trans years ago and, and coming to terms with who i am and transitioning none of that was part of it that's right so the idea that i'm supposed to be on board with it mm -hmm. is ridiculous especially when it defies logic it defies that's science right. it defies ethics it defies <laughs> so much of like I, I feel like a lot of people in the community first of all are not trans that's period. Right. That's period. right. That's period. There's been a huge influx of straight people. That's right. Cis people that come in that's right. and they have other issues that they are misdiagnosing as trans. That's right. And these are typically the people that lead us down the path of things that make us look Well, bad. because now you don't need gender dysphoria to be trans. I mean, that's an actual thing they say. And I'm like, really, then why are you even trans? Well, trans is blah, blah, blah. You know, they come up with all this insane. I mean, but why do you want to be trans so bad? This is not beautiful. I always pushed against that hashtag trans is beautiful. I thought you are actually indoctrinating people with that. It is not beautiful. It's a life full of medicine. It's a life full of surgery. It's a life full of always having to be honest yeah. about who you are. And when you start saying biology isn't part of that, you are actually not trans then. Trans is yeah. biology. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> that, that's why also you have the right wingers that come and talk about, well, what about biology? It's like, yeah, that, that that was a huge part of it, actually, That's for right. me. And it's not for a lot of these other people that are in the community now. Mm -hmm. But for me, it had everything to do with it. I would have never That's right. had the 
desire to transition or had these feelings mm -hmm. if there was not something that went wrong in my wiring as a child, possibly even as a fetus, because there's been studies that show that as well. Yes. Um, and, and you're right that now, you know, activists have really pushed this idea of dysphoria not being a part of the equation at all. Dan you know, and, and I hate to use that word dangerous because that's been, you know, weaponized danger, all these weird words that they but throw out there. But it is. It is actually applies to that. When you start opening up the door to say anyone can be trans, that says to me, wait a minute, there's some kind of thing going on here. There is some, for I mean, I'm gonna, do I sound conspiracy? Okay, I might be. But that being said, there has to be something bigger. Why do you want all these young people to be trans? And why are we putting this in a space where it's like, anyone can just self id as trans? And then you don't look like a female or you don't look like a male and you have no desire to want to be like that. Yeah, I have a desire to walk the world as a man and to look like a man. And to, you don't think everyone should know how much work it takes for me and you to look this way. It's not natural. We have to work our ass off to Painful. look like this. Pain, everything, but Expensive. we do it. So what about this new generation that doesn't want to what they call pass, right? And me and you have passing privilege. We don't have passing privilege. We have a thing that's called determination. And our determination put us here because we want to look like men and women. So that's where I distinguish myself as a different type of person than these people that are today self IDing, not wanting to pass, no surgery, no hormones, gender, whatever they are. I don't even know. But that's why I really do make an effort to say I'm a transsexual man. I am not transgender. I try really hard to say transsexual. And you watch my videos, I think you know that I don't yes. always say it. No. But I try, but it's hard because I also grew up in a generation where that wasn't the word. That's right. So that's like the struggle is that through the generations, the concept has changed. But you're right, transsexual is so much more of an appropriate and yes. objectively accurate term right. because it is that it's medical it's medical which is i'm a medicalized person who has gender dysphoria i've been diagnosed with it i have a disorder i have all of the things that i know made me this person and because of that i went through steps it took a long time i did not rush through this and it's really what i advocate for slow down mm -hmm. why is everybody in such a hurry to transition that's where my red you know my my red flag goes up and i'm like wait a minute people are rushing into this life-changing space this is not i'm gonna paint my eyebrows green yeah. and then tomorrow i'm gonna change them to blue i'll tell you why they're rushing there's a lot of money to be made off these kids right. having these surgeries right. and going on this medication so the doctors are rushing them yeah the parents are being emotionally blackmailed saying oh. telling them that you know their kids gonna kill themselves if they don't mm. and what people have to understand we talked about this in the video we just filmed from my channel which is already out um that when you tell a parent that kids who don't transition kill themselves. That's right. You're also telling the kid that. Oh, God. You are putting that in their head that they're either transitioning or their life is over and they'll never be happy. Right. When in reality, I hear from people every single fucking day mm -hmm. who are grown ass men and women, biological, you know, cis people yep. who are comfortable being that and say, I grew up with dysphoria. I grew up thinking that there was something exactly. different about me. I have so much parallels in your story, but thank God I was able to outgrow it yep move on from it but now they're not giving kids that option but they're not that's exactly Sorry. i i put on my twitter i i, I wrote to all the women out there who w were raised as tomboys or masculine women, how are, what do you, how, I forgot how I exactly put it, but I said, how are you, are you now living your life as a woman? And, or would you have been fast tracked as a trans kid? Oh my God, it, it went blew viral. up, it blew up. I got s thousands upon thousands of women telling me, my God, Buck, I would have been totally fast tracked as a trans person because I was masculine, I was this, I was a tomboy, I was, and I thought, wow, this is so powerful. This is what kids need to see. Yeah. That's why I did it because I want young people to see you can be a masculine girl or a feminine boy. That has nothing to do with being trans. Yeah, the concept of a tomboy has been erased. That's right. It's which is gone. So, so sickening. It's sickening. I think butch women are so important, but especially gay butch women, okay? Not all butch women are gay, but gay butch women, we've lost that space. And I remember when I transitioned 30 years ago, okay? Imagine, I was in the gay woman's community. I was very butch, and I'll never forget, when I wanted to transition, they hated me. They came after me, they called me a traitor. Wow. I lost all my friends. I had no friends when I transitioned. Oh I did gosh. it all by myself. And it was a very lonely, weird space to be in. And so as you see today, kids have TikTok, they have Instagram, they have all these things where they can sort of be a community which actually on some level is dangerous 
because I think that yeah. they feed each other. I didn't have any of that and I did it all by myself. And I think because of that, it really made me think about what I was doing and how, how this is gonna affect the rest of my life. Because you had to stand on your fucking own. That's right. And that's the thing that so many people ask me, like, how can you be right wing and trans? And it's like, honestly, <laughs> Are you I think that being trans actually made me right wing. Yes. Because it instilled in me the importance of self-reliance. That's right. Independence. Uh, financial security right. and make, it was not cheap to transition. Nope. So I had to like buckle up and be like, mm -hmm. oh my God, I have to rely on me and myself only. That's right. And that's how those virtues of, of self-reliance, independence and, and individualism yep. were instilled in me. So honestly, people who think it's so confusing, I think There's nothing being trans made me right wing, I'm gonna be honest. But do you know how many LGBT people are right? There's so many people just don't know it. And honestly, they don't talk about it because they get nailed by the community. Yeah. If they talk about, well, I'm not really, you know, a Democrat or I'm not on the left. Mm -hmm. I'm more, I'm more in the middle, to be honest with you. Yeah. But that being said, I see myself going, yeah. my dad's just waiting. He's like, I'm going to make you Republican. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> we and him are going to work together on that. Um, but, 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 but it's true, you know, like, um, tell me your experience as well. But for me, I can't walk through a gay club through a, a trans night at a club. I can't walk through an LGBT area without being stopped constantly That's right. from gay people, trans people, everything in between saying, I agree with you, but I could never say it. Oh. And it's like, well, you know what, bitches? Yep. Maybe some of y'all need to start fucking saying it. That's right. Stand it, up. Is it just like, oh. if you have the balls to... <laughs> I'm not gonna say. If you have the balls to cut off your balls, you have the balls to say what you mean. Brilliant. Just say what the fuck you mean. But why is everybody so goddamn scared? In the, uh, 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 because they see what we get. They see the abuse we get from so the community. What? I don't care no, about yeah. it. No, yeah, we're, we're yeah. good over here. Trust yeah. me, you can join us. You're not gonna, and, and every person that joins us is gonna be less slings and arrows for them that That's are saying right. it. That's right, that's right. So, and, and I've noticed that myself. Yeah. Like when I was one of the only ones, it was like, damn, I'm getting a lot of hate over oh, here. Oh yeah. You came in, the it's divided in two. That's right, you know? that's right. Now I took a little bit of your crap. <laughs> yeah, 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 you divided it in two. <laughs> and you know what, when a third person comes, <laughs> Miss Caitlin, and then this next that's one, this right. next one. And that's right. so, it's it's crazy because there are ethics to be considered with with being trans now that people just mm -hmm. throw out the window. So yeah. you have these kids making irreversible decisions, um, and then you know the trans sports thing is a little bit less of I think a pressing issue, although it's it's still something we need to be talked about. Of course, it needs to be talked about. 100%. So what's your views on like Leah Thomas? Oh my God, she she needs to step back, step back and step down. Know and your she, lane. And she needs to give that trophy to the woman who she beat in that thing. And that would have been so powerful if she did that. It would have been so, oh my God. I would love her if she did that. I haven't even considered that could have been something that it happened. It would have been so huge for oh. us, for our community. For us and them. That's right. It would have literally, I was, a, I was a female, a very high ranking female athlete. I know what it takes to get to that level. And it's not a joke. And so for some trans woman to come in and pretend as if she doesn't have an advantage. And to, Leah knows she has an advantage. Let's just be honest here. Yeah. She's just being used. First when off. When you have to look down <laughs> at all your competition, <laughs> you're noticing an advantage. You know it. And you when your it. shoulders are literally twice the size, your hand, your arm reach. Everything. Everything. Like, everything. Come on, lady man. It's it's, it's like ridiculous. <laughs> What's up, lady man? <laughs> <laughs> I totally <laughs> But you know well, what I mean? I'll respect her pronouns and I'll do all of that. I have no issues with that. That being said, I have issues with cheating, especially yeah. in sports, and we're not being honest about biology. Now, with kids, totally different. My son plays with girls on the soccer team. It's all good. No one cares. Those yeah, are kids. kids. No one cares. High creepy. school, it's getting a little bit different, I think. Yeah. And I think we do need to have a little bit of a discussion about that. But forget it. When it comes to college or pro sport, no, 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 no. Sorry, dude. You are a trans woman, which makes you a biological male. Get with the program, and I'm not into it. I will. I'm not okay with it. And she was on hormones for one year. For like beforehand. a week. <laughs> yes, <laughs> started as an adult. Yeah, and it was all. And and That's as right. someone who, I think we might have been actually close to the same age when we started hormones, and okay. I and I can confirm that that first year, it's not as if like there were changes, but mm -hmm. they're not that dramatic in the nope. first year. They sure aren't. Sometimes not even in the second. That's right. Sometimes the third. You know, I'm still noticing changes six years, yep. seven years after that. I'm like, oh wow, that's different and i didn't think that would ever change but it did cool yep. um so the the idea that like 
The other thing is people who don't go on hormones have no idea what hormones really do. None. They have no all. idea That's right. what they can and can't do. That's they right. think that you take a fucking pill and all of a sudden it's Ooh. equal. And it's like, I'm sorry, no. No, far from it. And I, I'm on testosterone. I can tell you that it has literally changed everything in my life. I'm still changing from it. 30 years on this stuff. Wow. So these hormones are powerful. And at the same time, we need to understand what's happening with these bodies. If you've already gone through, so so now when I say, when you've gone through puberty, that's when people are gonna say, well, see, that's why puberty blockers are so important. But no, don't see why puberty blockers. We need to understand that trans people are different than biological people. I'm a different type of man. And when you t t try to put me in with all men, you're actually being disrespectful to me as a transsexual man. I'm not a biological man, right. I never will be. I'm a different kind of man and I respect that. And because I respect it, guess what? Dudes respect me. And there's beauty in acknowledging those differences. That's like, right. I, I said this on, I did an event over the weekend where the moderator was um, a cis woman. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the questions I felt like were leading me to almost like, well, Blair, how does it feel to be whatever? And I was like, it puts no sadness, mm -hmm. dysphoria, or um, hate in my heart to acknowledge that I'm different from this woman sitting next to me. That's right. In That's fact, right. I think it makes you more beautiful. It does. It makes you more powerful, more beautiful, and understanding who you are. So, so even like, oh, let's just use the analogy of a person of color. So I think that they want to be proud of being a person of color. They're not going to walk in and stand in a room of white people and be like, okay, well, I guess right now I should right. just be white. <laughs> no, you should be black and you should be cool being black. What if everyone just started calling you a white woman? You'd be pissed about that right. because you're not a white woman. You're a black woman. So on some level, it's kind of the similar thing. Why are we trying to disassociate our trans, right? Our trans history by making us say trans women are women. Trans women are not women. Trans women are trans women. Yes, you live. As and a why woman. is that not enough? Why is that not enough? That's what's so bizarre to me. It's such a mantra. It's such a culty mantra. And it doesn't do trans people any good None. because it, for me to go to a doctor's appointment, it's important for me to state yep. these are the medications I'm on because I am trans. Yep. This is the That's difference right. and how you're going to have to care for me medically as a person different from a different woman. You know, yep. you I walk in and I have doctors asking me, are you pregnant or breastfeeding right uh -huh, now? Right. Of and course. it's like if I was one of these people who think trans women are women, I would just say, I would just say no. But for me, it's like, that's an opportunity for me to say no, because right. I am trans. And the way they're gonna care for you is completely different oh because there's so much more to take. You know, yes. people don't understand also like, before I say this, can we get water in here? It's really hot. It's, it is. it's so hot, like I'm sweating. I thought I was a sweaty pig. I'm dying. I'm like always sweating. <laughs> it's testosterone. <laughs> Maybe I still got some, but I'm fucking dying. <laughs> I don't want to forget. I was gonna, but when we get back, I was gonna say, um, talk about the negative ramifications for our health of being on hormones. That's right. The, no, it's the so important. There's trade offs. It's a tra trade off. Tra and also, why can't you just be honest? I talk about it all the time. That's why I talk about being a biological female. I got to go to the gynecologist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which that's a whole other fucking story. Thank you so much, Xander. I really oh, right on, my friend. It. Thank you. We are dying in here. Okay. Um, oh yeah, so one of the things that I think people don't talk enough about, and especially doctors don't talk about this, you know, when I went to get on hormones, I walked in and 20 minutes later had a prescription for estrogen and there was no safeguards, no anything. Wow. They don't tell you about the negative trade-offs that you will That's likely right. experience by being on those medications. Every medication has a side effect, right? That's right. So for trans women, you know, osteoporosis is a yep. thing. Um, that's something that I'm gonna have to really um, combat through certain right. foods and maybe other drugs long term. Mm -hmm. um, and then honestly, I'm not super educated on all the negative effects because they are hidden from you. They They're don't hidden. talk about it. That's right. So that's right. For trans men, mm -hmm. what are the things that you've had to deal with negatively as side effects from testosterone? Excellent question. And um, so I want to say, before I say that, I just want to say, so I thought we had a thing called informed consent, right? Yeah, where's so, the information? <laughs> to make to make a, 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 a an actual real choice, with inf you're not giving the right information. So how can even a youngster make an informed choice if they're not being informed properly, or even parents? Right. So that's, they're being duped right off that, the bat, bat. So one thing I know that young trans men are not being told is, 
uh, atrophy can happen from long-term use of testosterone. And what atrophy is, is it's, it deals with your reproductive system, right? So me being a biological female, I have a reproductive system, a uterus and a cervix and a vagina and all these things. Once you start putting an estrogen into my body, I mean, testosterone into my body, it takes out the estrogen, which is basically what happens for menopause, right? Women start losing their, their estrogen right. and age, and then your vaginal space becomes like total mess. And long story short is I had no estrogen and no one knew because I'm an experiment. 30 years ago, they had no idea what they were doing. Wow. And I had all this pain and I'd go to gynecologists and they'd be like, we don't really know what's going on. Just go home and like deal with it. Until eventually I had what's called sepsis. And what happened was I had an infection that popped inside of me and I became septic, which people don't understand. Septic means you're gonna die because it got into my bloodstream. And if I wouldn't have got to the hospital fast enough, they said, dude, five more minutes, you would be dead. Oh my and, God. Yeah, no kidding. I'm sitting here alive today because the doctors could actually figure out what was wrong with me. Long story short, I was one of the very first long-term females on testosterone with this, and I have the mo first recorded case of atro atrophy due to long-term use of testosterone. That's just one thing that can wow. happen to us. But they're not telling these young guys who are taking this, and then they're all saying, well, I'm getting these weird cramps, and I oh, have this God. thing, and I'm just like, you have atrophy, dude. And the doctors don't even know any of that. So I'm just thinking to myself, like, how can we be giving all this medication to these young people without giving them the right information to make the right choice? Because politics have completely embedded itself That's in right. trans health care. That's right. It is so entirely political. Therapists, yep. doctors, endocrinologists yep. are all in fear of losing their job, their re reputation, their status and their credibility for having the balls, I'm really not trying That's to make right. puns here, That's having right. the balls to tell someone, That's right. actually, maybe you shouldn't be on these medications. But they can't. Right. Affirmative therapy now. And what's, that's not even therapy. Therapy is when you sit with your therapist and she says, well, hold up, wait a minute, dude. How do you know you're trans? And why do you want to be trans? And they push back on you. Which that's never therapy. happened for me, by the way. So it was a roll oh, of the wow. dice wow, that wow. I was happy was transitioning. That's right. It was very much a roll that's of the right. dice. and. You're looking at really three generations yep. of trans people right now. Pretend there's a 13-year-old in the room yeah, with that's us. Right. You're looking at you where you had safeguards. You had to live as a man for a year before you transitioned, that's right. correct? That's right. For me, flash forward 20 years later, yep. no safeguards. <gasps> it's sick. Not one. Wow. Not one therapist appointment. I, I did go to a therapist um, on my own accord beforehand to figure uh -huh. out if it was something else, but they were not a gender therapist. It was not the same right. thing. Right, right. Um, and then these kids have even less safeguards less. than me. None. Zero. They have zero safeguards. That's what people do not understand. So people who defend this will make the argument, well, mm -hmm. if a health professional decides it's the right thing, <laughs> who are you to say? It's like, first of all, <laughs> have we not learned in the past two years a lot of health professionals don't really know what the fuck they're talking about? <laughs> and we won't even talk about all the things that make us believe that now. Ooh. But the trans kid thing is just so, to it, me, and and... We talked about all this like five minutes ago in a video. We're kind of but rehashing it. But we need to keep it. talking we about it, to. Blair. It needs we to be need to because too. I don't care. That's fine. People will hear that. But the more we start speaking about it and they understand not all trans people are okay with transitioning children, that then more trans people are going to start. I'm already getting more trans guys stepping up behind me. They are. Good. They're trying to say, thank you, Buck. Good. You're giving me the balls. They say that to me to stand up and start speaking about this. And I'm like, look, you guys, you're not going to lose anything. The community is not your community. Nobody cares about you unless you're saying the things that they want you to say. That's 100%. not community. So it doesn't matter what you say right now. And if, are you more concerned with what people think about you? Are you more concerned with your integrity? Integrity is what will get you through the world, not this dumb community that's happening right now. Right. People hate you because you're speaking out about things that need to be spoken out about. And that's the trans shit aside. That's right. That's your integrity as a human being. That's right. If you can sit by and you really... Ignore the fact that 12 year olds are getting Ugh. double mastectomies. Wow. That, that 12 year olds are going on puberty blockers, not developing, they're destroying their healthy reproductive mm -mm. systems. Mm -mm. If you can sit by and say, well, that's collateral damage, or oh. well, I'm going to stay in my lane that's or whatever. Right. Um, that's right. Your lane should be sticking up for what's right. And I understand right. not everyone's going to be as outspoken as us because they no. don't have to be. Maybe that's you're right. maybe you're a, a high school coach. Maybe you're a doctor. Maybe you're a teacher. Maybe yep. you work at Taco Bell. I don't know. It's not the same thing. However, if you're in this community yeah. and you're talking about trans issues and you're not talking about That's right. the human rights violations that are occurring oh. against kids right now, and I will call it that because I believe that it, it is. is. You're it complicit. Is. That's right. You're excellent. Not even not only people like to say part of the problem, you know, you're perpetuating the problem. Yeah. 
That's right. And and it's not. And there's going to be a huge pendulum effect that's really going to. I, I don't want to believe this could ever happen, but I could foresee a future where transitioning as adults becomes somehow illegal because oh, people eventually are going to have to push back on this. And the way humans work is it always goes too That's far. That's right. Right? That's so, right. So when they really start pushing back against the trans kid thing, That's right. I would not be surprised if there's a few states at least that are like actually transitioning in general is illegal. And then look, now we're fucked completely. That's what I keep saying. I keep saying you guys are going to ruin it for all of us. Right. Uh, once you put kids in the picture, we're done. People don't play with kids. That, that's why it's weird to me that we put kids in the front of this whole sort of place that trans is about. We put kids in this front space because I think they thought people would go, oh, these poor, no. Mm -mm. That's when people started pushing back on us even harder because yep. they're like, wait a minute, you fucking weirdo yeah, freaks. Wait, you're, um, you're like doing what to kids? Cutting up kids? Yeah, like uh, that's what they say. Just read it all on the right. It's all what they say that we're cutting up kids, that we're killing them, that we're freaking them, that we're making them into freaks, that we're making them desexualized. They say all, and then they and use are all those they TikTok. Wrong? No, they're not that's wrong. That's the thing. That's right. That's the thing. It's like people People want to be like, how can you, um, you know, sit there and, and listen to right people talk about this? I'm like, are they wrong? That's right. That's the minute right. someone says that I don't have a right to live my life as an adult, how I choose, you're my enemy as well. Yep. But right wingers who are speaking out against kids becoming sterile That's are right. absolutely correct to do so. That's right. And you are not a normal, you are not a healthy, functioning human being. Your brain's not working properly nope. if you can look at what's happening and think that this is not a problem. That's right, because people are too fearful. You see what they, they're, they're very smart, whoever started this, this trans activism. They put fear in everybody in this community. Fear, if you say something, you're transphobic, you're a turf. I'm all of those things. I'm 100%, 100% turf, totally. I'm a complete turf. And I have no issues with that. I do think we need to have the discussion about trans women and women's spaces. And understand, if you're not, you are not born a biological woman, right? You were raised as a male, yes, which is a different space. I was actually raised as a female. Not to say that you're not a woman or any of that. You, yeah. you understand where I'm going with uh, 100%. this. 100%. Socialization is everything. And yes. I understand. We're just talking about that. It is so important for women to have, I don't care about men. men. The whole world is a man's space. Women, biological women, need to have their own space. And if the, if they they want to graciously let trans women come in the space that's up to them it's not up to yes. us in the world to, to do that unless you are an actual biological woman and understand that space you don't get to have a conversation in that right. and trans women are men they are biological men who come from a male space once they start to you have such grace in the way you handle the women thing you understand it you understand who you are you're very respectful to women that's why women are respectful to you because you don't want to override their because space because it's a two-way fucking street that's right lots of people don't understand it doesn't go one way no nope. or it doesn't go the other way it goes <laughs> we're gonna meet right here that's and, right and, and i've been saying you know i was thinking about this the other day i was thinking maybe if you're gonna become a woman maybe start with learning to respect women. that's right because what i'm seeing a lot of is these videos there was this disgusting video recently maybe i'll put it in the edit of this um, trans woman, loosely using that term, uh. um, in a bathroom saying, you know, basically filming and saying, I'm in the women's yep, room, and then, and then did the deepest, the most disgusting, mm. cynical, or sinister laugh yeah, that I've it. ever heard in my life. And I'm Sick. like, how can you, and I'm supposed to That's I'm right. supposed to think those people are the trans allies and those are the ones that are really fighting for the progress and it's no. like actually you're a piece of shit. Those are the ones that are ruining and it for if, us. If you take pride in making women feel uncomfortable, that's, that's right. disgusting. And people say, Okay, where's the line? It's not that hard. I'll tell you where the line is. <laughs> that's right. I'll tell you where the line is. <laughs> I have a dick. <laughs> that's right. I'm not going in any space. That's right. Where that is visible that's right. to women around me. That's right. Because I would never want to disrespect them. That's what I'm saying. It's the same thing as I don't, I don't want your anything around me either. That's so right. It's, it's, and it's the same way I said it's a two-way street because it's also partly about me. Why would I want it out in front of anyone? That's embarrassing for me. I don't particularly love that part of me. That's, that's part of right. being trans. Yes. But then also, you have to know your fucking lane. Like, my life is not missing out because I'm not in women's <laughs> changing rooms. <laughs> I, I live a beautiful, vibrant life. That's right. And if there's one or two things that I don't feel comfortable doing and people don't feel comfortable with me doing because yep. I'm trans, yep. I can live with that. That's right. I, I'm not, my life is not made or broken. That's right. By being friend. able to have my dick in front of women. That, see, that's why people need to hear your voice out there and see trans women aren't all crazy. They're not all trying to take space. They actually respect women. You you literally use the woman's room. No one's going to say anything to you. No one's going to look at you. No one's going to say anything to you. Why aren't trans men? Right. We don't see it the same flipped, right? That's right. We don't see trans men 
being rude about it. That's right. Pushing their way into spaces. No. Nope. Granted, it's different in the sense that I don't think a lot of biological men would be they don't care as uncomfortable because they don't care. what people don't understand is that being a woman there is a certain vulnerability that goes along with that. That's right. Women are more vulnerable to a lot of things, to sexual harassment, to sexual violence, to being made to feel uncomfortable. Yes. And that's also part of it that I don't understand why some trans women don't understand because that's one of the first things I actually learned when I transitioned. That's right. That I was like, oh, walking through the world, being perceived as a woman, there's a lot that is invited with that. That's right. There's a lot of the ways that men treat women that really are not fucking cool. Nope. You know, I, I lived in Hollywood for years, and if you ever want to... I used to think I used to think catcalling wasn't a thing. I used to be one of those people that was like, "Oh, women are making such a big deal." No, you live in Hollywood yes. or New York or whatever, and you will understand what it is to be catcalled. I've been followed by men on the street. Uh, I've had men. There was one time a man pulled over next to me in his car, asked me for his number. I said, "No, thank you. I'm engaged." He followed me in his car, was like speeding around me, like getting in front of me in, in the lane. Like it was crazy. Oh my There's God. been so many situations that. Yep. Once you actually do make that transition and you do, are perceived yeah. as a woman, you understand. That's right. So that so it's not hard for me then to make that leap that, well, of course, a lot of biological women would not feel comfortable because they go through their whole lives having males right. pushing themselves on them. Yes. And, you know, we can talk about if they're right or wrong, but they're perceiving this trans thing as the same thing. Yes, they are. Or at are. least very similar. Because the ones you just spoke about, those yeah. trans women who are not respecting uh, women's spaces and go in and go, ha, ha, ha I'm going to show you my lady dick. And like, yeah. really? Wow. You think the whole world is going to be okay with that? No, you're the ones who are making it so the world hates all of us. Why don't you just step over here? There's no, it is, it's just not an argument. Like, it's just not. Women's only spaces are women's only spaces. Get over yourself. Right. Either you're going to be invited. I, I do the same with men's spaces. In the beginning, I was not invited to men's spaces. They did not want me there. They hated me. When in the early beginning, when I didn't look so male, right? And I was kind of on that sort of what are you kind of space. Yeah. And they hated it. They were like, leave, get out of here. This is a man's space. And it would hurt my feelings and I would leave. But I would just keep coming back until eventually they were like, okay, you're cool. You're. But I never pushed myself on it. I always left the space. And I always was very respectful of the space until eventually I just you know grew into this space and they were okay but I just think that's a different conversation because men are different than women very different it's It's, they don't feel threatened by me they're not threatened by me because they're not they're just not threatened by me and women are threatened by men by exactly what you said so trans women would understand this particular little thing they might start to understand why we argue about sports why women argue about their own space, why women argue about being a lesbian and what that even means, right? Right. All of that is very, very important. And when you start putting trans women in prisons and now people are getting pregnant in prisons, who could have guessed that would oh fucking happen? Oh my God, I'm just like, you watch this thing happen, right? We were. And what's so frustrating <laughs> about that is that, you know, and, and you can probably wait to that. It's like, we talk about these things and we're like, watch out. That's Soon there's right. going to be trans women and women in prison. <laughs> they're going to be getting raped. They're going to be getting pregnant. Even if it's not rape, you can't just have people That's having right. sex and making babies. That's right. Now you have to, and, and, and you know, it, it's, it's comical in a sense, but it's also, there are multiple, that recent case, I forget which state it was, but yeah. there was um, a trans woman who impregnated a woman yeah. and like, People were joking about it. It's it's, it's whatever. There, I understand the comical sense to it, but also Mm-mm. there are multiple children now that are being born into this world where both their parents are, are in the prison, prison system. Prison system. And guess where those kids go? In the foster care right, system. Right. And guess where their pipelines to? That's the right. Prison system. There you go. So it's like, you know, there's so much to be considered with just the integration of trans people into society. And I don't understand why so many trans people treat it as if it's this combative thing rather than finding the areas where we can be cohesive and and just... Well, that's what we used to do. We used to do that. Yeah. I mean, you did that. I did that. I, I was on I, the, at the tail end of when they did that. Yes, that's what, thank God, though, at least you got some of it. Because I'm telling you, it's the reason why I'm a different kind of trans person. Because I literally had to actually have myself coexist in the world. I had to learn how to do that. I had to be part of the world, not against the world. Where today, we're teaching young trans activists to be against the world yeah. unless the world just literally lays down and lets us walk all over them. That's never going to happen. And it's so unhealthy. It's like you're setting up you know, these yep. kids to have this like adversarial relationship with the world yes. and people around them. And it doesn't help anyone. It just no creates one. more strife. And and I don't see this this trans thing going in any direction other than more strife until it reaches just a complete 
complete boil, which it feels like it is. It already has. It's, it's now happening. Yeah, it, it's spilling it's, over. It's actually sad because so many people are going to get so hurt from that, including us on some level. They're going to start taking away our medication. It's not going to be as easy of us to transition. It's, there's just going to be so many actual trans people are going to get hurt from this. They already are. You, what do you think about all those detransitioners? 28,000 detransitioners in a group. I don't know if they're all detrans, but they must be interested in what's going on here. Yeah. But those kids who should have never transitioned took away surgery took away medication took away therapy from an actual real trans person That's a good point and that myself that in, in on some level is so insane that now these kids now there's real trans people here suffering with their dysphoria and their chest and all the things that they should have got they should have been put in front of the line there's like a five-year waiting line in 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 UK at the yeah, NHS. Yeah, it just exploded. It exploded. There's like, how can enough, there be a yeah. five-year waiting to get trans surgeries? This is ridiculous. Yeah, and, and it's like, it's hard because there is this attitude, and there will be some of this in the comments, and there will be some people tweeting mm -hmm. about this after mm -hmm. we post this, and, and other stuff we filmed together, together earlier today. People saying, well, why are they fighting against trans people? Why are they transphobic? Why are they fighting against the community? <laughs> and that is such a matter of perspective, that's right? That's right, that's right. Because in my perspective, you can't make me believe my intentions are different than what I know in my heart. That's right. Which is my only intention by talking about all of this mm. is to actually help trans people. That's right. I'm trying to steer things in a direction that I know is the correct direction. That's right. The correct direction is not 12 year olds sterilizing themselves. That's right. The correct direction is not Leah Thomas in, in women's sports. That's right. The correct direction is not, you're transphobic, you don't want to fuck me. <laughs> that right? one cracks me You have up. bad taste, but you're not transphobic. <laughs> um, you know, like, it's all this crazy shit. Crazy shit. So why would we be on board with that? We're not going to be on board with that. Transition saved our lives. So we yeah. are clearly all about transitioning. There is no way, shape, or form that we're anti any of that. What we are is being logical and seeing something that's happening that is not real and not trans. And you know, before you couldn't say you're not really trans, but I'm gonna say it right here. There are a lot of people who are not really trans who should not even be thinking about transitioning. Yes. And I would never say that if I didn't see the amount of detransitioners happening, the amount of kids saying, I didn't get this, I didn't get that. I went into Planned Parenthood and 40 minutes later I had you know, testosterone and no one told me I was gonna get yeah. all these things. I'm thinking, this is the most sloppiest, insane thing I've ever seen in my whole life. It's and I will so not sloppy. be a part of it. I it's will so not. It's so sloppy. And it saved our lives. So the thing is, people, that's what people need to see. We're not anti-trans. That's ridiculous. What we are is anti-indoctrination, anti-lies, because there's a lot of lies coming. When you start saying biology isn't real, I'm done. I'm out of here. Because right. that's the whole reason I'm a trans person is because of my biology. And all you have to look at is how much the conversation has changed in the past few years. Mm -hmm. It's like... That's how you know no one knows what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> totally. Because trans literally had a different definition like four years ago. That's right. <laughs> non-binary, the term non-binary, oh. if you if you look it up on Google, you look at um you can look up certain phrases and words to mm -hmm. see the um amount they've been used over the years, oh, over wow. time. And non-binary was literally not used, searched right. for, Googled, or typed on the internet before like 2014. At least wow. not in the gender sense. I mean, it has other things, maybe like coding gender, or whatever. And I, they used to use like gender queer and all kinds of other like yeah. things, right? It's like yeah. it's like, but that's the other frustrating thing is this yeah. is this push to make um, non-binary like under the trans umbrella. No, that pisses I, me I off. I don't think trans should be a fucking umbrella. It's not an umbrella. I think it's, it should be a very specific diagnosis. It's of a why person. I moved from transgender to transsexual. Once they started saying that transgender is an umbrella term, I'm like, I'm not an umbrella term. That's total nonsense. And I have a very specific thing yeah. from, you know, I want a born female and I want to be a male. It's real easy, people. There's no, you know, but that kind of stuff mixes people up and they don't understand. I really think of non-binary as a holding pattern. And I think a lot of kids take on this non-binary, either decide to transition or say, oh, this is the wrong space for me to go. But I think that they want to be a part of something. So non-binary is a way for them to be a part of what's happening. Oh, in this of course, world. it's a group they think they're joining. Yes. And the other, the, the other thing that needs to be discussed is the fact that there's a lot of people, particularly young people, yeah. that have never had a real struggle in their life. That's right. That's exactly right. They've never had a real struggle in their life. Mm -hmm. They've never had any characteristic 
that defines them out of just being a normal yep. white kid in the suburbs. <laughs> they I mean, hate it. Right. And I would hate it too. And I grew up a normal white kid in the suburbs. So did I. <laughs> and I hated it. <laughs> but I didn't leap onto some sort of identity to, to yes, change it. To change I happened it. to actually be trans and figured it out. But yeah, yeah. I'm seeing a lot of people that just, they just want some sort of struggle. That's they right. want some sort of group you know, and, and, and I get that, but maybe like join like a spinning class or something like, <laughs> or the goth or punk rock or something that's so well, less, this is, this is the new goth and punk rock. It's the new goth and punk rock, Except which is so they're cutting scary. off their boobs. Except, oh my God, someone wrote something the other day that was so profound. It was like saying that actually the new trans stuff is more about body, body modification. It's like a body mod space. Yeah. You know, like remember when piercing and tattooing and was like this big deal. Now it's about body mod about your chest and about, you know, your body and about and I was like, whoa, that's like really profound. And it's I true. it's true. I haven't really thought about it, yeah. but what comes to mind when you say that is um a lot of people that are getting double mastectomies and they're also opting to remove their nipples. Oh, uh, I can't even handle it. So to me, okay, you're not trying to be a man then. That's you're right. trying to be See? something else. Something else. Because men have nipples. That's Sorry. right. That's, that's right. That's different. That's where I started asking these kids, what are you doing? They're like, oh, Buck, you're so old. This is like the new way of doing things. I said, wait a minute here. It is not the new way of doing anything. What you're doing is you're desexualizing yourself. Well, the doctors told us that we don't need our nipples. I said, you 100% need your nipples. Nipples are in a erogenous zone. They're like a thing. They actually feel, I feel my nipples. What are you talking about? And so that in itself, the fact that doctors are even telling these young people, oh, you don't need your nipples. It's totally okay. I'm like, what, what, what are we, we're going to have a group of kids that are going to grow up with no chest and no nipples. And can we speak really real about something really quick? I don't know if this is your experience, but... A lot of these trans doctors are fucking weird. Oh God, they're insane. Or first off, doctors are a little bit insane. They're, they're very egotistical. They're narcissists. Out Actually, the yeah. Yeah, they are. They yeah. really are. But remember, and doctors practice medicine. This is what people don't understand. They don't know medicine. They're practicing they practice medicine. It. So they don't know anything. So a lot of times they use us as a way and means to figure out this drug or they don't necessarily know what they're thinking about it. Sometimes a doctor will give you a drug and, and if it doesn't work, you have to go back and they give right. you a different kind of drug. Yeah. So they don't necessarily know shit, but I think a ton of these trans doctors are complete wingnut, weirdo, like Nazi, like, you know, experimenting on kids kind of shit. 100%. Yeah. And, and even the ones that are, um, that I've gone to throughout the years, I've found that a lot of them just are a little, <laughs> It's weird because we're if, if we weren't on camera, I'd be saying it I in know, a much so more free good. way. <laughs> totally. But I'll just say it how I, I would say it to you if there was no cameras. A lot of them are fucking weirdos. <laughs> a lot of them are tranny chasers. No, that's true too. Hundred percent. I've I've yes. I've had doctors throughout the years that ended yes. up just being chasers. Yep, that's exactly right. Um, and that's a whole other conversation. Oh god. Um, and a lot Sick. of them get very, they become activists rather than doctors. That's so right. They're so overly invested in the space that they make calls that are not necessarily logical or best for the the, the, the patient. That's right, that's 100%. And I, that doctor I think I talked about earlier, in the sink, I think his name is Jack Turbin. He works at Stanford. He's a huge pusher of puberty blockers. And he's a, not an actual doctor, he's like an intern doctor or something like that, but he's really in, in bed with Lupron. And so that's the other thing we need to understand. These doctors get in bed with these big pharma people. Yes. And that's why this is happening. I believe it's all about the money. Lupron, the drug that has been used throughout history to sterilize pedophiles. That's right. That's what we're giving. Now we're using it for children. Now we're using it for kids. And they <laughs> love to blanket it in really nice um, <laughs> phrases like like affirmative care, <laughs> trans health care. Yeah, that's right. We're trans gonna, affirming care. We're going to have affirming. so many screwed up kids in this world. And like, no way. I'm fighting. We're fighting for the kids. You know what? Somebody's got to save these kids. Somebody has to step up and say something in our community. So I really appreciate that you have for lack of a better expression, the balls to speak up about this because it is a difficult thing. You know, the community is, is so insane right now and it's so one, it's focused in this one specific way that anyone who speaks ill of anything outside of what they tell you to speak is a transphobe, is it's a, a turf, is, that's culty. It's very cool. Look it up, anyone out there, look it up, look what a cult is made of, and you will see check mark. You can check mark everything in the trans community. There is a lot of cult like practices wow. in the trans community. Wow. A lot. Wow. Have you lost a lot of friends oh, yeah. in the community tons. for speaking out? I tons tons and tons. I, I knew the care. answer before you. They were never asked. my friends. This yeah. is how I look at it. I'm a 60 year old dude. You think I'm not you think I'm fucking stupid? I'm not. I've been through hell and back. And if my friend 
doesn't like me because I have a different opinion, go for it, dude, out of here, get out of my life because my friends have different opinions. The people who are in my life, the small amount of people who are in my life have different opinions than me. That's why they're my friends right. because it's how we learn and how we socialize and how we kind of get things to change. You can't just be around people who think like you. That's not cool. Yeah. You have to have people have different opinions and talk about things and do all that. So my friends in the community were never my friends and I just realized that. 100%. So I don't really care. You, you don't have to be my friend. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to create change and I'm here for the kids now. That's my, I don't, like I said earlier, I don't care about an adult who makes a choice. Yeah. I care about a 12 year old being duped in the fact that they're trans and that they need to have top surgery. Yeah. What? And what, <laughs> you know what's so scary is that um, people often talk about like, oh, in a few years, there's going to be just so many detransitioners because of all this. And that's true. Mm -hmm. But there's already so many. So many. And, th and this shit has only become so radical Whoa. in the past few years. So it's, it's going to take some people like, that's right. A lot of time to figure out that they've been That's right. violated. That's right. And That's... so it's going to be just this oh huge my God. avalanche. It breaks my heart, honestly, because this saved my life. And I'll keep saying it over and over. It has been the best thing I ever did. I would not be sitting here today. I would not be alive. I would Same. not be functioning. I wouldn't be the badass that I think I am. I wouldn't be any of that stuff if I didn't transition. And that's what I want people to see. They need to see that it can save someone's life and they can become a great part of this, this earth. But we are not doing that right now. We're doing something else to these children. These this children are not shit. trans. This is some other shit. It is honestly. some other this shit. This is not. Are we, are we trying to, so, so one of the things I think a lot of people say is that it's homophobic, that people are transitioning their children because they'd rather have a son than a gay daughter. That's also a thing, well, you let's, know. Well, let's, let's fucking be real because yeah, let's be real. you look at um, other countries, particularly in the Middle East. That's right. Uh, where basically to cure being gay you that's transition right. because they figure if you're going to be having sex <laughs> with men then you might as well just be a woman that's and right. that's what they do to cure gay people in these that's... middle eastern countries and when when we see that we say oh that that's homophobia yep that's disgusting yep when it happens here from some like white liberal mother <laughs> right on my friend let's be why are they all white <laughs> yep <laughs> i love you so much i say it all the time it's always white. They're right. all white. Not one black trans guy comes after me. Not one. Black people don't play that. No, they don't. They got other shit to deal with. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> gonna... This is this is almost exclusively. It's exclusively. These kids is like it's like a white white suburban, money kids. That's right. Like one hundred percent. Why is it? That's a right. great question. And so I personally think it's because they don't they they are in a space to be able to do that. They don't have any worries in the world. They got everything pretty much handled there, right? So they need a struggle, which is what you said earlier. They need some kind of struggle. Maybe they're listening to rap music and hearing the struggle in that, and they feel like they need to have some kind of struggle in their life because everything is taken care of for them. You know, I have a friend who goes to a university and uh, a pretty well-known liberal university, and he told me, or she now, she tra she detransitioned, he detransitioned back to she, and she told me that half of this school is trans men. Half the female population of this particular university is trans. What? Okay, I was like, wait a minute. He said, no, there's incentives to come to that school. They will help you get your surgeries. Oh the actual God. university. I mean, I'm like in shock. This is going into the school systems. People don't, I feel like a lot of the leftists who really support a lot of this stuff and the kids stuff and all that, they very much live in like 2001. <laughs> That's right. Right? Totally. Like they are stuck in 2001 yep, where yep. it was very hard to transition. That's right. Where everyone was very hateful towards trans That's people. Right. And so, and they're still caught up in, it's like, no, you have to understand that in 2022, it's mm -hmm. different. Way different. I mean, you can literally have your surgery paid for. You can right. literally go into the clinic and get, you know how hard it was for me to get testosterone? Oh my God, you know, there were pharmacists who would not give me my testosterone back in the day. And was, activists pushed against that. That's right. But they pushed against it so hard that now you don't even need a diagnosis you don't even of anything. Need a di that's right. And it's like, but that's just like almost any issue. It's like you have to take the trans shit out of it. And it's like, yep. humans are just so extreme on either <laughs> end. It's so like, true. why can't we just like, <clears throat> we can't, we can't just get in the middle and find the truth. Yep. It has to be like fucking like yep. kids have to go through like hell to get the drugs or they can never get the drugs. It's like, yeah. Yeah, there's no middle ground. There's never a middle ground. There's never, and also people understand this is a very personal space. It's individual, it's personal. Why are we putting it out all over the world for people to see this? What about these kids who are being transitioned with their parents and being put all over TikTok? Disgusting. And then they grow up and they're Disgusting. 20 and they're like, why did you do that to me, mom? This is a personal private space. Now everybody knows I'm trans. 
There are some kids who don't want to be outed, yet they're being outed by their parents. Their parents are pushing the transition on them. I do believe there's some yeah. munchausen going on here for sure because there's it's no a cool logical thing. explanation why a parent and then a child would be trans. That's there's right. no logical explanation <laughs> also that it would. I mean, it's, not, it's so crazy. It's not fucking hereditary, bitch. <laughs> like that's some stupid shit. Our whole shit. family is trans. <laughs> what? They have shit like that. Oh, they I have like non-binary family. No, I can't take it. I just, you know, it's become such a joke. The world you know. is like laughing at us right now. And it, it, this is not a laughing space. It's a life-saving space. And it shouldn't be what it is now. It's become a thing. It's become a thing to become. I want to be trans. I'm like, you don't want to be trans. You are trans. There's a big difference between wanting something right. and being something. You figure out you're trans. That's you don't right. become trans. That's right. You don't want this label. You don't want. So that's when I said, okay, there's a different space going on. These kids are identifying as trans, right? I identified as a punk rocker because it made me happy. And I was like totally rough and I got to hang out with the dudes. And you know what I mean? So I see it on some level, very, very parallel to me trying to find my space as a youngster. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about something a little lighter. <laughs> Good luck. Tranny chasers. <laughs> right on. <laughs> so you are an adult. Yeah. Adult film star. Yeah. Yes. Star. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. star in the truest definition because yeah. you really started the mm -hmm. category of I trans did. male porn. You are the most famous trans male porn star on yes. the planet. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about this earlier. It's so interesting. I feel like I keep calling back to earlier because the second he got off the plane, we just yap, 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 yap. <laughs> totally. We don't we shut crazy. the fuck up and we're together. <laughs> um, My lady came out of me. <laughs> <laughs> very that. Um, but you obviously have done porn for so long. So it's interesting because your demographic is what fans gay men. So when I first started game, so I didn't know how so I, I created the very first trans male porn movie in the world 21 years ago. And so I had no idea what to make, right? I didn't know who was going to be my demographic of viewers or my fan base, none of it, because it didn't exist. So I just, I actually made three different movies. I made a movie with me and all men. So it was like kind of a gay movie. Then I made oh, wow. one with me and w women and men. So it was like a bisexual movie. And then I made one with me with all women. And I just kind of threw them out there. The one with men, blew up and oh, all wow. these gay men were like dude i fantasize about a man with a vagina for my ever i'm like what oh, they so literally cool. fantasize about a guy like me and then they would write me all kinds of weird shit like you're a weirdo and i'm gonna kill you and you're ruining gay men's sex <laughs> it was so great all the bottoms were getting mad <laughs> oh my god that's what people don't get though <laughs> people don't get that like you know, there's been studies on the trans women porn. And it's mm -hmm. all straight men who watch it. That's right. Like almost exclusively. Exclusively. Same thing with the other side, which yep. I didn't know that until you told me, but it makes like the makes most sense. sense in the world. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I had a best friend for years and unfortunately we don't talk much anymore. We kind of distance, oh, but I'm sorry. yeah, but he was like my gay best friend for years. Oh. And he, um, he pulled me aside one time. He was drunk and he was like, <laughs> can I tell you something I have never told anyone? And I'm like, sure. And he's like, I'm really into trans men. And he's, and he's a gay male. <laughs> yep, that's right. And that was kind of the moment where it clicked. I was like, oh, yeah, if straight guys are into me, then clearly gay men would be into someone like a Buck Angel right. or. Except for, except for, they still, they are very much into penis. Of course they are, right? Yeah. But so that's what they had to kind of work around, right? So they had to work around this idea. And I'm like, dude, it's just a hole. Once you kind of just give them that, it's just like, Oh, you're right. It's not a big deal. And you know, gay men be horny as hell. That's so right. You, you tell <laughs> them there's a hole and they'll just that's go. That's it. And I, I, dude, I have two holes. So now you're, <laughs> now you're really in love, oh dude. Oh, my God. You were so, <laughs> so funny. So it was hilarious. And then next thing you know, like at first they hated me. And then they just started like, if I, I wouldn't be where I'm at today, not only with my pornography, but with my work and be, being in the world, it's gay men who uplifted me and have always uplifted me. It's why I fight for gay rights. And when I start seeing our community sort of on some level, very homophobic, because they are, some of the things that come out of people's mouths are so homophobic, it's insane. Yeah. I'm like, no, 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 no. We cannot take over that space. That is not okay. Like if you don't date a trans person, you're transphobic. I'm like, what? What are we saying? And that's why biology is important. Same sex marriage, same sex partnership, same sex. These are important to people. And so if we as a trans community try to take that away. We're taking away people's identity choices. And that's where I start getting upset because it's very, sex is important to me. I think sex is important for everyone. I think pornography isn't for everyone, but I think but it helps a, a lot of people. It helps and... a lot. It helped me. It helped me really become very comfortable with my body. My, as you know, I'm naked across the whole world and I don't care. People either make fun of me or they don't, but I don't have any issues with it at all. And I yeah. think porn really helped me sort of understand my body being a different kind of body. And that's so important. Like, 
I think um, there's a obviously a really deep fetishization of trans people, trans women, and trans men. Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah. I think that, and and I like to post like bikini pictures on Instagram, and, and I dress a certain way sometimes. Yeah. And I think people think that I'm much more sexual than I am. I know but because I'm, they do look like sex pictures. But I, I know they're hot. But I'm actually <laughs> like. I'm not that sexual of a person. I'm, I and have a really okay. low sex drive. Yeah. I um, am not as comfortable with my body as maybe people think that I am because sure. I can put it together for a picture and I can put cute outfits together and, and whatever, but yeah. I'm not as in tune with my body sexually as yeah. I could be. Yeah. So I think it's a beautiful thing when people are. And it's one of those things that, um, yeah. you know, it I'm is. really not in line with, with um, conservatives and right-wing people who really stigmatize that because I think oh, like- That's the one thing they hate. Yeah, and you did a debate with Charlie Kirk I did, about that. And he came after me. I knew he was. I and mean, he was getting all hot and sweaty. And I'm just like, dude. All hot and what? <laughs> I'm like, dude, it's okay. Like, it's, you know, and I was trying to, like, tell him, look, my friend, it's it's an elite, it's a legal business. I pay taxes. And this is America. Elite. This is America. We can do. So, so for somebody who's in your space, you should understand. No, no, it's bad. I have a porn addiction. I go. But that's not my that's problem. You. He's literally blaming me for his porn addiction. I go, my friend, addiction is a very personal space. You have to take care of your own addiction. Yeah, so you're saying that, on me. that we're not going to have alcohol anymore because there's alcoholics out there? Like, that's just the most ridiculous thing. So, you know, I always have to get into these spaces. I will always say this. Adult entertainment is not for everyone. It's yeah. called adult entertainment. It's not called, right? Anybody can watch sex. There's a reason this thing exists. And if we start to understand that it's important for it to be legalized, once we not le have it not legal, oh my God, all hell will break loose. We'll have so oh, much yeah. bad shit out there. It'll be insane. Oh yeah, I mean, it's the same. I mean, it's a whole other conversation, like a, kind of a libertarian conversation in yes. the sense of, it's the same with other forms of sex work. That's right. Um, which is, it, is porn considered sex work? Well, you know, that's the funny thing about it. Porn is legal, sex work isn't. So okay, what determines so what determines the difference between pornography? If a camera. That's right. Right. That's but right. But then, so then you look at you know I've known um, a lot of people in the trans community that are sex workers. Yep. It's a very common thing in our community, especially very with trans common. women. Yep. Um, and the the crap they go through because everything has to be sort of under the covers. That's right. For lack of a better term, and and and, and discreet. Um, they don't have recourse for a lot of violence they face. They don't That's have right. recourse for STDs they may contract. That's right. Um, and these clients can really mess with them really mess with them and, and run run amok because there's nothing holding them accountable there's, but so. they have no legal space i have tons of, of trans women friends who are sex workers and it's a very difficult space to be in because you're very vulnerable you can't just pick up the phone and call the police right that's not going to happen even with porn you can't necessarily do that there's a t total stigma around all of that sex yeah. work right so you know yeah it is true there's a lot of trans women who do sex work yeah, and i think it's because it's an easier space and it's hard to get jobs and it's hard for trans people to walk in i think it's harder for trans women than trans men i'll be honest yeah and and it's it's also you know i think i'm actually the only trans woman i know that has never done sex work oh wow yeah no like, i think there's more now like yeah, the, yeah 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 for sure yeah. but like when i first started transitioning everyone i knew did it that's right um and and you see the draw of it because you're treated you know maybe as this thing that's like ugly in society but then you have all of these men who that's are like right. actually you're beautiful I know. and they'll pay you and so it's this weird dichotomy and so i yes. see how people get caught up in it i don't judge it at all i think people think that i do because, no, because I never I'm right thought. Wing. we wouldn't be okay. sitting here if you if you judge yeah, yeah i yeah. would not be sitting here if you judge that i just it, think life not. is crazy and life however you get through life and is is your journey and and yeah. your whatever that's and, right and you know if if someone had People sometimes only can afford these surgeries, especially in the past when it wasn't covered yes. by surgery, by doing sex work, and that's, that's their right. and that's their story and their journey, and and it is what it is, you know. And it's harder for a trans woman to go get a job. A lot of times, maybe they're not passing a hundred percent, and yeah. their ID still says male. For a person like myself, it doesn't people don't get so upset about it? If, yeah. Right. If a butchy girl walks in, but she says she's a dude, but your license says female, people aren't so weird about it. They're much more weird about a man looking like a woman. Yeah. It's a weird, it is, it's an actual, 100%. you know that, I can, you you live it, I know that. It's a, it's a space that is 100% different and we do need to talk about the difference between being a trans woman and a trans man. They're two different spaces, but we were lumped in together a lot with this activism, mm -hmm. right? My needs are different than your needs. My transition is different than yours, how I walk the world, how I, just because we're trans, we're not the same. We, are, we yeah, live different, we have a total different, lives. Yeah, That's but right. it's also, um, I do feel a sense of, and I don't feel this often with trans people, mm. but I do with you. I feel a really intense um, camaraderie with you. Yeah. 
Right I feel a bond with you. Right I feel on. that even though we went in two opposite directions as far as our bodies, <laughs> um, I do feel like there are parallels in the sense that I'm so comfortable around you. Yeah, and, right and that's on. just not what I feel around a lot of other trans people. No, neither do I. I don't have a lot of trans friends. Yeah. So, I mean, this has been really, I feel like we could talk for six hours. How long well, we're it? connected. Yeah. We, we, we have a lot more work to do. Oh my God. This is the start. This is the start. This is the start. But of... I think, you know, like I said, and I always say, I really admire you and I think you're such yeah, a badass. Likewise. And really, it's because of you that I'm able to speak out like this. So I need you to know that you, you really paved the way for other people to come along and say, hey, wait a minute. If, sh if you are brave enough to stand up against a mob of people, then why am I not as powerful and, and able to do that? So you did give me this sort of way to, you paved it. You paved you. me to be able to st sit here and speak out against a community that I once loved and that I feel very not a part of now. Yeah. Well, I consider it just giving it back to you because you paved the way for me. For porn. You know? <laughs> for me to do porn. <laughs> Imagine if I started OnlyFans. Oh my God, I'd be out. You buy, oh, you would make bank. <laughs> I'd be able to buy a new house oh my in like God. a day. In like a day. Yeah, I'd be would. living in Bel Air. You so literally would. <laughs> yeah. I, no, actually, I'd be living in your neighborhood because, little known fact, Buck lives in Lady Gaga's neighborhood. I totally do. <laughs> when when her dog walker got shot, you were on the news. I was there. As a witness. That's right. It was and that, crazy. That's when I knew. I was like, oh, he has money money <laughs> that's right porn yes yeah, a real coin um thank you so much for coming buck thank this you, has been friend. amazing and we're gonna do so much more together you're awesome everyone go follow buck and right. see you in the next episode bye guys